Is it going? All right. Okay. This is another one of my videos that I like to make, and I think seven or eight people watch them. He watches them. You watch, watch them? them? Yeah. All right. Cool. What we're going to talk about today is intercoolers, uh, especially with a blower. When you got a belt-driven blower, you want to have the most efficient intercooler possible. When you have a turbo, most people set a boost controller for a boost level and they forget about it. They say, I want 15 pounds, it makes 15 pounds and that's it. But what nobody ever thinks about is what does it make on the inside or the inlet of the intercooler and the outlet of the intercooler. So come here and take a look at this real quick. This is another car. This has a pro charger intercooler on it. This is an old school kind of design. A lot's changed since then, but we still make this. You feed down here, it goes through a very short air path, giant air tank out. Not much restriction here, a lot of cooling area. This is a real good unit. It was kind of the staple of the industry for like a thousand horsepower for pff, the better part of a decade. Anyways, my buddy Colton here has got a, a car. This is Colton over there, say hi. hi. Come down here. Colton brought, he bought a off-brand intercooler. We're not gonna say what brand it is, but if you're into turbos and you're into the internet, this is about the baddest thing you can buy, according to the internet. This thing is rated at, what, 700 horsepower? Yeah, something Maybe 700 horsepower. squirrel horsepower, because it's not actual horses. Come here, let's see why. All right, here's the deal. Not too bad, this car's on 12 pounds. It's a two-valve car. Uh, 526 when we revved it to 6,500. 548 when we revved it to 7,000. When I was dynoing this and noticed, I, I felt that this car was really lazy on power for what it should be doing, especially for the blower speed. So, I decided to measure the boost before the intercooler and after the intercooler, which nobody does. So let's see. This car made 12 pounds at the motor. 23 before the intercooler. That is terrible. Not even, not even in the realm of bad, not good. That is awful. So, what is that? I mean, 11 pounds of pressure drop across that intercooler. So, anyways, Colton's gonna get a new intercooler. He's gonna put a Pro Charger intercooler on it. We're gonna bring this back down, or excuse me, we're gonna bring this number up. Hopefully have about a half a pound pressure drop. So this car's gonna go from 12 pounds of boost to about 22 and a half pounds of boost. And that power number is going to go way up. So that's my video. Don't buy cheap intercoolers. And if you are going to buy a cheap intercooler, do that test. Doesn't matter what power hour you got. All right, correction time. Come here, come here, come here. Before my friends on the internet, because we're all data nerds, it wasn't a 10, or excuse me, an 11 pound difference because I did rev it farther. It was actually a nine pound difference at the same RPM. So who knows how bad it would have got, but legit, it's a nine pound difference. What does nine pounds mean? Well, that means, uh, let's use a round number. Let's say for every pound of boost you create, you create 10 degrees of temperature. That means there is 90 degrees of air going into the front of that intercooler that don't belong there or don't need to be there. So therefore you are chopping that intercooler's ability like in half to shed temperature. Because basically if we could bring this number down to say 12 pounds before the intercooler, well then you only have 120 some degree air. That intercooler could easily cool that down and move right along with it. So not only do you have a boost problem causing a lack of power, you are also got a heat problem and your intercooler is almost inherently worthless. So that's the end of it, sorry nine pounds. He's getting a new intercooler. This thing's going to be awesome. Peace!